David. Uh, thanks so much for being here. And welcome to the fifth annual State of Story Grid address. Uh, I started this five years ago, kind of as a joke, thinking nobody would actually care what we were doing every year. Um, but then uh, now every year in October, I start getting emails wondering when I'm going to do it again, and uh, which is great. And I love talking about Story Grid, and I love talking about how we're helping you with your writing. So I'm excited to share today a little bit about what we've been working on this year how that's going to affect the coming year, uh, and uh, first and foremost, how it's going to help you uh, become a better writer. Just a couple uh, couple things before we get started. I am recording this, so if you miss something or you need to go back and review something, I will send out a recording later today. Uh, so don't feel like uh, if you miss something, you're, you're never going to be able to access it again. I will have a Q&A at the end. So any questions that you have, um, I will stay on, and I always just stay on and answer questions until there aren't any questions anymore. So uh, hang on to those questions. Uh, if you put them in the chat throughout, they might get buried, and I don't, I don't want to lose it. So hang on to them till then, and I'll make sure to cover all of uh, all of them at that time. But let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So uh, this is uh, this is the fifth annual State of Story Grid. My name is Tim Grawl, and if you don't know much about StoryGrid, uh, I can sum up everything that we're doing in three simple phrases. So our goal at StoryGrid is to help you learn the skills, write a book, and leave your legacy. And I'm going to talk more about this as we get um, deeper into what we're talking about today, um, but everything comes back to this for us. And so if you ever wonder what we're trying to do, why we're deciding to do what we do, uh, this is our common goal is to help you learn the skills, write a book, and leave your legacy. As I said, my name is Tim Grawl. I'm a writer, and I'm the CEO of StoryGrid, so I run all the operations and day-to-day -day and marketing and all of that kind of stuff. And of course, I'm the right. I'm a writer as well, and I'm always uh, I'm kind of the chief shock monkey. So anytime we got new stuff that we're trying to teach or learn, I'm always the one we apply it to first. Along with me is Sean Coyne. He's the founder and creator of Story Grid, um, and I'm going to talk more about him in a few minutes. But uh, everything that I teach on on this training, on YouTube, and our guild, and any of our trainings, it comes from Sean, and it comes from uh, his research and his experience over 30 years. Along with Sean and I is Danielle Kiowski. She's the chief academic officer over Story Grid University. And Leslie Watts is the editor in chief of Story Grid Publishing, and she's also in charge of all the training of all the editors at Story Grid. And so, for me, what we're talking about today, um, we are doing an update on everything in 2023, but something really happened at the end of 2023 for me as well. Um, as we we're approaching the end of the year last year, at the end of 2022, I really felt like something was off. Something was going wrong inside of StoryGrid, and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. If I looked at all the numbers, um, you know, how much we were making, the number of students, uh, everything was growing, the lines were going up, they were going in the right direction. Um, but I knew there was something, there was something wrong. Um, and I just couldn't put my finger on it. In fact, I talked to a few people about it and they were like, what are you worrying about? Everything's going the right direction. I'm like, I don't know, something's off. And so um, I decided I needed to just start talking to people from the Story Grid community. And so that's what I started doing. I ended up having uh, over 50 one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls with writers uh, from the Story Grid community. Uh, some of you I probably did these with. Um, but I did uh, with uh, current students, uh, people that hadn't joined anything, people that were new to StoryGrid, people that had been around from the beginning. And I asked them all the same set of questions just to get to know you a little bit more and what you're trying to accomplish. And um, in some ways, uh, I was surprised and in some ways I wasn't. But I think my favorite thing about talking to all of you was that not a single person talked about trying to get rich with their writing and making a ton of money. Not a single person wanted to become famous. Not a single person had a goal of becoming an international, worldwide international bestseller. Um, it for None of that ever came up. 
And so when I went back and looked at all of my notes for all of these phone calls, I saw two things popping up over and over. The first is that uh, you wanted to help people with your writing. Uh, you wanted to tell your story because you felt like you had something to say that could help people. And then you also wanted to leave a legacy. And this meant a lot to me. This was really cool. It felt like I was we were attracting the right people because this is why we're doing it too. Uh, this is why I wanted to be a writer. Um, this is why uh, Sean does the work that he does is he wants to help people and he wants to leave a legacy uh, that leaves the world better than uh, better than he found it. And so this got me excited um, as I was talking to people. This was the kind of people, uh, if we could draw a map of the type of people we wanted involved in what we were doing at StoryGrid, we had done that. We were attracting the right people. Um, but there was another problem that was starting to show up. And I was uh, I started noticing this problem when I was talking to our students, the ones that were taking our seminars or in our classes, is that they weren't improving at writing. And they were starting to get frustrated about that. Now, this is interesting to me um, because one is I need to know this, but the other is they were sticking around. So they weren't like, oh, we're going to go find something else because they knew StoryGrid has something special. But at the same time, they didn't seem to be improving with their writing. And obviously, this is this is hard to hear um, as the guy running StoryGrid is that this is what our students were feeling. And so I kept asking more questions about it. And what I found is that everybody was learning a lot, right? So we were doing all kinds of teachings, doing all kinds of trainings. People were learning all kinds of things. They could even uh, say back to me a lot of the story good principles, a lot of the things that we were teaching. And yet their writing wasn't getting better. When we looked at their writing, when we looked at the what they were accomplishing, what they were um, showing our editors, um, they weren't getting better. And so I just started wondering, like, what is the disconnect here? I know we have the best understanding of writing and training than anywhere else. And yet we're teaching it and people are learning. But when I look at their scenes or their books or all of that, when we actually look at what's happening, the writing wasn't getting better. And I had to really come to face something uh, that was really hard to face. It was a little embarrassing. Um, it hurt when I when I realized it. it started keeping me up at night is because you know what this makes us if we're training and training, but nobody isn't getting and people aren't getting better at writing it makes us just like everybody else. And uh, this is what I was running into is I'll, I've been through all, not all, but I've been through lots and lots of training out there for writers. Um, all, you know, all the masterclass authors, lots of other individuals teaching writing. And I know that we're teaching the absolute best stuff, but if people aren't actually getting better, publishing books they're proud of, putting out writing that works, does it really matter? Um, it just pretty much makes us like everybody else. And so this is, by this point, it's mid to late spring. I'm having lots of existential crises crises, crises, crises. And um, and at the same time, I was running into this dirty little secret that we had behind the scenes, which is while everybody else wasn't getting better, I was getting better. Me, Tim, the CEO, my writing was getting significant, significantly better. And so what does this mean? Again, what's the disconnect? All right, so let me back up a little bit. So for those of you that haven't been around StoryGrid forever like I have, um, let me give you a little history of what this has looked like. So way back in the year 1991, uh, Sean Coyne goes to New York City, and he gets a job as an editorial assistant at Dell Publishing, which was a part of Penguin. And when he showed up uh, in New York and got this job, he had this idea that he would, they would actually teach him how to be an editor. They would give, they would give the secret sauce, their methodology for both finding the best books and then taking those books and making them better. And what he found was they had nothing of the sort. They were all kind of doing it off of intuition, intuition and guessing and hoping. And um, and this wasn't good enough for Sean. So he started developing his own system. He started studying the masterwork, studying the great writing, looking for patterns, looking for what set other books apart, what set the best books apart from everything else. And so in 1996, he started moving up the echelons of publishing. 
he got promoted to senior editor and launched a brand new fiction imprint. So at this point, he'd only been in publishing for about five years, and they gave him his own imprint because he was doing such a good job. He ended up working at a few different publishing houses, and then he founded his own publishing house called Rug and Land. And in three years, he published 50 titles, and a third of those became major bestsellers. In 2011, he co-founded Black Irish Books, and he published uh, 25 ti over 25 titles there, including the uh, perennial bestsellers, The War of Art and Turning Pro, which have both sold millions of copies. And then, of course, in 2015, he wrote and published The Story Grid, What Good Editors Know, and he took everything he knew about um, macro storytelling and the structure of story, and he put it in this book. Now, here's what's really interesting is over the last couple of years, there was this big lawsuit inside of traditional publishing. Two publishers were trying to get uh, combined and there was a lawsuit about whether or not they'd be allowed to do it. None of that really matters. What was really interesting is they had to share publicly a bunch of numbers. And what we found was that less than 35% of books published by traditional publishing um, are profitable, actually make back what it costs to publish them. So think about that. Just one in three, not even become bestsellers, just make back what it costs to publish those. And so just like any, they're, they're basically just throwing spaghetti against the wall and hoping to see what sticks and then trying to go after that. And so I thought that was a ridiculous number. Uh, so I went to Sean. I was like, I wonder what your track record is. So we went back and looked at all the books that Sean has worked on in his publishing career. And this is what we found is that 83% of the books that Sean worked on um, were profitable. Now, if you study statistics, you will know this is a meaningful difference. 35% versus 83%. And so what this says to me and what we've seen over and over is that if you understand the right story structure, the right kind of writing, and you can look at it and find the problems and fix those problems, your books have a much, much higher chance of being a successful book out into the world. So at this point, I enter the picture. Uh, so in 2015, I joined Sean and we, we start the Story Grid podcast. And one of the things I don't think everybody knows is that I came to Story Grid as a fan first. So I didn't know Sean. Uh, we had never talked before. Uh, I bought the book, The Story Grid, when it came out. I got the book. It was very intimidating. So I put it on my bookshelf and I didn't read it for like six months. And then um, I moved to Nashville. And after I moved here, I was like, all right, um, I'm going to take this seriously. I got to learn how to write fiction. I've been doing it off and on for years and years. So I pulled the story grid off the shelf. I started reading it and I'm like, oh my God, this is what I'm looking for. So I just emailed Sean and uh, we ended up on the phone. And by the end of the phone call, uh, we had decided to start a podcast together. And so uh, we started doing the podcast, releasing it every week. And uh, if you've listened along to any of those, you know that Sean uh, is, let's call it direct about his feedback on my writing. Uh, I would often get emails from listeners just checking to see if I was okay, uh, because his feedback on my writing was often much longer than the actual writing itself. And so uh, so we kept working together on the podcast. I published uh, my next book, which was uh, Running Down a Dream, which was uh, a memoir in 2018. And then in 2019, uh, I published my first novel, The Threshing. And uh, we worked on these live on the podcast. So our rule at this time was uh, he we were not allowed to talk about my writing unless we were recording the podcast. And so all of the feedback and everything on all of these are were on the podcast. And uh, I kept working because I wanted to work on my next novel. So in 2020, I turned in multiple drafts of Sean to Sean of my next novel, and he threw them all out. Because what I didn't really understand at the time was that on both of my previous books, Sean had done extensive line by line editing, making my writing readable. And so um, at this point, we sat down across the table from each other 
uh, and Leslie and Danielle were there. And uh, Sean said to me, uh, this is, you know, a quote that's burned into my brain. He looked at me and he said, Tim, you can't write a fucking sentence. Um, and he's like, and the problem is he went on to explain the problem is he didn't know how to teach me because in his role at publishing, um, by the time a writer got through all the gatekeepers and got to him, they were pretty good at line by line writing. They usually had big major like macro problems in their story. That's what he would fix. That's what he wrote about in the story grid. And what he realized was with my writing, with other writing that we were seeing coming into story grid, we had to switch our focus to line by line writing. And so um, we started uh, working together on developing a system to take everything he intuitively knows about great line by line writing and how to actually teach it. And so we started working on my line by line writing. Uh, and for the next two years, this is all I focused on um, was my line by line writing. Um, in fact, I was specifically not allowed to write anything longer than a scene because um, if you can't write, and I've been preaching this now on the YouTube channel, uh, if you can't write a single scene that's good, there's no point in stringing 60 of them together. And so uh, I focused really hard on my line by line writing. And then last year, I started working on my next book. So I had uh, one of those muse lightning moments of a book idea. And so I started working on a book. Um, and, but the thing is on all the drafts, all the planning and everything, Sean didn't look at any of it. So I worked with Leslie, our editor in chief, uh, through the idea of the book and then the writing of the book and the couple drafts I wrote of it, but Sean hadn't seen any of it. And again, um, you know, Sean can veto anything that I do. He has thrown away multiple full drafts of books because they're not good enough. And so, um, just a couple weeks ago, I sent the draft of my book to Sean. And on November 5th, 2023, he called me from JFK airport and he told me that he loved my book and it was the best thing I'd ever written. It was one of the best books he's ever read and he can't wait to publish it at story grid. And obviously that felt amazing. Um, I was, I, you know, it was one of those where I checked my phone to make sure it was actually Sean that I was talking to. Um, but the truth is, if I'm really honest, it felt great to hear him say it, but the truth is I knew it was good. I knew it was good because I'd become a good writer. Uh, I've worked really hard on it and I'm a good writer now. But again, I come back to this question, where's the disconnect? Why have I been leveling up? I am not more talented than any of our students or any of you. I don't work any harder on my writing than any of you. Um, I don't think there's anything special about me. And I think that's pretty clear because you can go back to the beginning of the podcast and see my writing. And if you read any of that, it's really clear there's nothing special about my writing. So what happened to me that is not happening for our students in StoryGrid? So through this time, as you know, we're discussing line by line writing and macro writing and all of this, what Sean's been trying to do is develop what we call the full elephant of a narrative theory. Because all we've ever seen out there, and this is even what StoryGrid was early on, was just a piece of it, right? And there's that, you know, this idea that if you, I forgot the poem that it is or the, the short story, or if you blindfold people and they grab a different part of an elephant, they'll think it's a tree trunk or it's a snake or it's a spear. But nobody had ever successfully come up with a full narrative theory from start to finish. And not just a narrative theory of how it all works, but how you can actually teach it to people so they can level up their writing. And that's what Sean has created. So we have a full narrative theory now that Sean has created from a single beat all the way up to a manuscript. And we can teach teach it at every level. And that's what we've been attempting to do um, over the last couple of years since he discovered this full narrative theory. And the thing is, is that we were already successfully teaching it because it wasn't just me that was getting better. It wasn't just me that was leveling up. It was also the students in our writer mentorship program. So this is the part of our program where people are getting one-on-one -on -one feedback. 
And so look at this trajectory I've been going through over this year, right? And uh, this ended for me and it came to a head for me in August, 2023, as I started the year having this vague sense that something was wrong. So I started talking to people and was hearing uh, that they love StoryGrid, they love what we do, but they were getting frustrated because no matter how much we were teaching, they weren't actually getting better at their writing and we were seeing the same thing. And then at the same time, I'm looking at my own writing and seeing the progression of my own writing and seeing it get better. And then I look at our writer mentorship students and they're getting better. And I don't think there's anything special about me or any of our writer mentorship students that set them apart in some magical way. And then it's August, 2023. And it just hit me right in the face. It was like, it was staring at me the whole time. We've all had those moments where you realize something and then you realize, I don't know how I didn't already know this. It's the feedback. That's what's going on. What's the difference between when we teach people and the people that are actually getting better is they're the ones getting the feedback on what they're doing. And here's what I realized. We were spending a lot of time putting people in a classroom and teaching them all the intricacies, science, physics, and everything else about how to swim, right? It was like we were taking people, putting them in a classroom for days or weeks or months and teaching them how to swim and never really going near a pool. And so then once they got in a pool, they started drowning. And this is what we we're seeing is we would teach and teach and teach. And then students would go home and they would start drowning and they wouldn't know what to do. And they wouldn't know um, how to actually get better at writing because there's something really unique about this creative act of writing that makes it harder to learn than I believe any other creative act. So um, I use the metaphor of playing the guitar a lot, right? So if I want to learn how to play the guitar and I start learning how to play and I play a wrong note, I can immediately hear the wrong note and tell that I'm doing it wrong. It's the same thing with painting. If I'm trying to paint this picture and I go through and paint stuff and then the picture doesn't look like that picture, I'm doing it wrong. And yet writing, we can do it over and over and over. And we often do sitting alone, sitting at our keyboard, working on our words every single day. And we're doing it wrong day after day after day. And we're not getting any better because we have no feedback. And so we teach. And what we found with me and with the writer mentorship program is that if we teach and then we have people try to swim and then watch them start drowning, then we can pull them out and teach them what they did wrong and have them try again. And if we do this cycle, what we see is that students got better and not just a little better, but a lot better, way faster. And so this is what I had to come to face uh, in August was that this was the thing that makes the difference. And so my biggest lesson of 2023 is that consistent, specific, short loop feedback is the only way to quickly level up as a writer. And so this put me in a position where we have some decisions to make at StoryGrid because a lot of our revenue has come from putting people in a classroom and teaching them how to swim with ever actually getting close to a pool. So we decided moving forward, Everything we do includes consistent, specific, short loop feedback. Um, and this was a hard decision to make. Uh, just last October, so just over a year ago, we had our biggest month ever at StoryGrid selling a seminar from Sean. But if we do this, we can't do that anymore. But it really comes back to what I believe, what we all believe at StoryGrid, but I'm the CEO, so it kind of comes down to me at some point. You know, I've been in the publishing world for 15 years, and I've had a lot of friends that um, get into the publishing world because they want to be a writer, and they end up starting businesses, they end up working in publishing, and then you fast forward a decade, and they haven't written anything. And so... I can't imagine me running StoryGrid and not continuing to write and put out what I hope is better and better writing. 
And I think I, I can't imagine running story grid if we're not doing the same for you. And at this point, I'm like, I would rather just burn the whole thing down and I can go find another job um, if we can't actually help writers become better. And so we have decided moving forward, everything we do will include feedback. And what this allows us to do is put our entire focus on feedback and make sure this is part of what we're doing at StoryGrid. Okay. So I've talked a lot about us and what we're doing. So what does this mean for you? So two years ago, we took Sean's full narrative theory and we created the best writing training on earth. Um, I stand by this. It's not even close, really. I've been through the other training. Um, it's not even close. We have the best training on earth. And we train all the way from beats up to a manuscript. We cover all seven levels of writing over a three-year program. It's a three-year program that we teach this in. And we literally start with how to write a great sentence and work our way up to writing um, a full manuscript. And we called this the Guild. And we talked about lots of different things that we wanted to, to potentially call this. Um, and we landed on Guild because we like this idea of an association of craftspeople often having considerable power. And I think writers have great power. It's also an association of people uh, for mutual aid or the pursuit of a common goal. And so I think our pursuit of a common goal here at StoryGrid is to become the best writers we possibly can. And so this program we created, we think of it as a transformational master's level training for writers committed to leveling up their craft. And the way we think about this is, this is how Sean and I uh, have talked about it, is Sean said, because uh, Sean graduated from Harvard, and so he's like, imagine if you could like get a card, you could buy a card where you could audit every class, any class you wanted to at Harvard. Like that would be a really valuable card that you could just walk in and take the class. Even if you don't get credit, you can't take the test, but you could at least get the training. And I realized that's what we have with our guild. You can audit the best writing training on the planet. You can go through all of the training. And so when you start with the guild, the first semester, we do six month semesters. And the first one, like I said, we focus in on that beat to scene level. How do you um, write a great sentence up to how do you write a great scene? And that is what we are super focused in the first year of our training. So we run, like I said, six month semesters. And then, like I said, too, throughout the entire three years, we go from the line by line all the way up to how to plan and write a full novel or novella. And so year one, we look at line by line through scene. Year two, we look at sequences through quadrants. In year three, we look at the 20 core scenes through a full novel. And the way we do this is we provide training. We have weekly training that's uh, uh, video-based narrative theory training delivered every Sunday. And you have a weekly assignment to put this into practice. And so the cost of going through um, the Story Grid Guild is $14.80 a year or $135 a month. And we think this is a killer price, right? Again, imagine you could get a card to audit the best writing training on the planet and have assignments to practice it, that's a huge win at this price. And we found that people agreed with this. So uh, we have lots of members in the StoryGrid Guild. This is some of what they have to say. The Guild has completely transformed my writing. Krista says, I spent years in the wilderness of craft books, university writing classes, and local writer workshops. Um, and it was the Guild that actually changed her. Annette, Annette said, there is so much more value than I was expecting. Pam says, this material isn't talked about anywhere else. Kathy says, I've learned so much from the Guild that has improved my writing. Christy says, I always tell anyone and everyone to join the Guild. Bill says, this will become the required basics for every writer in the future. I sure hope so. Uh, Shelly says, if you really want to learn how to write really, then this is the way to go. And then finally, John says, this is one of a kind deep dive learning you can't get anywhere else. So this is just the training, right? The training and the weekly assignment, $1,480 a year or $135 a month. 
But again, <laughs> I come back to, well, it's the feedback though, right? Just because I give you this great training doesn't mean you're actually going to get better at writing. In fact, we know that for a fact now. So what can we do to include feedback into the guilt? So we started asking this question. What if you could start getting feedback on your writing too in the guild? So the guild group training has all of that training already mentioned, but we're going to start doing, starting at the first of the year, we're going to do a monthly live workshop. So you're going to be able to submit your scenes. I'm going to pick a few of those scenes and we're going to workshop those together as a group on a live call, just like this one. And this is so, um, a couple things you're going to learn by doing this. First of all, you're going to see where people are making mistakes and getting, and so that you can see where you're making mistakes as well. But I'm going to hyper focus on how to, how you give good feedback. I want to train you on how you can give and receive consistent, specific short loop feedback. We do this on a week, weekly basis here. And so we know what works and what doesn't work. And again, we've been in those uh, critique groups where you get the shitty kind of like, oh, I don't know, the middle was a little soft or I didn't like the protagonist. That's not helpful. So we're actually going to teach you how to give and receive training or feedback to each other. And you're going to be able to do an instructor Q&A every month. So any questions that you have as you go through the program, you're going to be able to uh, get those answered from the actual instructors, the ones teaching the class. Along with that, we have a group discussion forum. Now, the main goal of this is not so everybody can just talk. It's so that you can find other members and create cohorts so you can start working together. The other thing is we've run six-week one-on-one feedback workshops, and we're going to give significant discounts to those, but I'll come back to that. So here's what I want to show you, is that inside of the guild, we have group training. So we have the best training on the planet, weekly assignments to put it into practice. And then we're going to host these monthly live workshops so we can take your scenes from the community. We can workshop them and give feedback and also train you on how to give feedback to each other based on what we're learning behind the scenes at StoryGrid of the best ways to give feedback because it's never really taught. It's never taught in the right way. So this way, even at this lower price, um, we can still offer that kind of feedback and training. So it's not this the training and weekly assignment you get for that pricing. You get the live workshops, the feedback training, the instructor Q&A, the group discussion. Now, at this point, you may be wondering, though, uh, and this is the question we've got, which is why we started this other side of the program which is, well, what if I want one-on-one -on -one feedback from an expert, right? I understand the group and that's all we can do, but uh, what if I want one-on-one -on -one feedback uh, from a story grid expert? So that's why we have the writer mentorship program. And this is the program where we have seen the greatest results. We have the happiest students um, and they're making uh, just huge progress. There's some of them here on the call as well. Um, and this is the program where you can get that one-on-one -on -one feedback, which is going to allow you to level up the fastest. So uh, when you join Writer Mentorship, you get everything in the group training, but you also get paired up with an editor mentor. And this allows you to get a personalized plan. So you get to know your editor and they get to know you so that you know, uh, so that they can actually help you make progress towards your goals as a writer. Um, this is the most important part, which is you get weekly one-on-one -on -one feedback. So as you work on the weekly assignments, they're gonna give you detailed feedback on what you got right, what you got wrong, and they're also gonna give you customized assignments. So they'll tell you what you need to work on next. And this is the thing that just makes all the difference is you're able to just stay focused on the places where you need to make um, progress and it's specific advice on what you need to practice. Along with that, you get to check in with one-on-one -on -one coaching calls so you can get direct support, feedback, and ask questions directly of your editor mentor. And the last two things that are involved in this is you have weekly group workshopping with your small cohort so you can learn editing and rewriting skills. And we do a yearly summit 
We started doing it this year for our writer mentorship students, and we're going to keep doing this. And it's going to be exclusive to the people, our writer mentorship students. And so there's two ways that you can take advantage of the guild. You can go through the group training, or you can go through the writer mentorship, which includes all of this. And this is 4,960 a semester, so six months. Um, or 940 a month. And so these are the two ways that you can get the most out of what we do here at StoryGrid and the best kind of training we possibly can get. Um, and you can go join that now and see more information at storygrid.com slash guild. So if you go to storygrid.com slash guild, that's where you can see all the information about the program, uh, and you can register for the uh, group training or put in an application for writer mentorship. Um, we make sure everybody that goes through writer mentorship fills out an application first to make sure you're a good fit. Um, and we have a limited amount of those spots. Uh, so we want to make sure they're going to the people that are the best fit. Now, I've got one more thing, um, because whenever we do this, so the next semester starts January 7th. And so that's you know, five or six weeks away. Um, but I know some of you already know this is a good fit for you. And when I'm in your position, I often procrastinate, start putting it off, start thinking, is this really what I want to do? And so if you know you want to join the group training, um, if you join today, you'll get $100 off the yearly price. So it'll automatically take it off if you go to storygrid.com slash guild and you join the group training. Um, it'll automatically drop that price from 1480 to 1380 and that will be your price forever. So next year in year two, it'll stay that price as well. So this will automatically disappear tomorrow. Um, so it's got a, uh, so you got to join today by uh, midnight Pacific time. So again, you can go to storygrid.com slash guild. So all of this comes down to we only offer two things here at StoryGrid now. We offer six-week workshops, and then we offer the Guild, because those are the best ways that we can provide feedback alongside of our training. And so um, for the next uh, foreseeable future, this is all we're going to focus on. It allows us to double down on it, put all of our resources into making it better, Um and uh, even uh, we know uh, we've actually already heard some feedback that people want more seminars from Sean. We're not doing those anymore because they don't actually get people to write better. And so we're going all in on feedback and the things that we know will help writers um, get better at their writing. All right. So um, at this point, that is my presentation. And I am happy to answer any questions. So uh, if you have questions about the program, if you have questions about uh, StoryGrid in particular, if you have questions about what we're doing, what we're teaching, if you have questions about writing, um, whenever I do these, I just stay on until all the questions are answered. So I'm happy to answer any questions. If you put some in earlier, um, they probably got lost. Everything keeps pushing down. So um, put it in again, and I'll just start from where we're at and keep going. But uh, so any questions you have, feel free to drop them into uh, the chat. Jessica asked, how long does the Guild Writer Mentorship take? Is it also three years? Yes. So it is the exact same curriculum. So um, again, going back to this idea of auditing classes. So the writer mentorship is the same curriculum, except you're working with the mentor to get one-on-one -on -one feedback as you work through to make sure you're progressing as fast as possible. The group training is more like auditing the course. So you're not going to get one-on-one -on -one feedback as you do it. We'll be doing that monthly live workshopping and trying to teach you how to do feedback on your own. But those are the differences. So um, it allows us to put the training out um, but make it available, the one-on-one -on -one to people that can jump into the writer, writer mentorship. But it's the same curriculum. All right. Rain asked, are the topics set per semester or can you choose your focus areas? Yes, we set them per semester. So we, um, what we found is 
so if a writer came to me and they said, okay, I want to learn how to write, um, where should I start, right? I would have them start with just writing one great sentence until they can write one great scene. Um, what we found is when people try to start with learning the big macro story structure, it feels better. It feels like, oh, I'm learning all this cool stuff about genre conventions and, you know, uh, how stories arc and how they move in the four quadrants. But then when you sit down to write, if your scene writing, your line by line writing doesn't work, you just string together 50, 60, 80, 100 scenes that don't work. Um, and so if they if write readers can't get past your first couple of scenes, they're never going to get all the way to the end. So that's how we structured the three year program is, is it starts with teaching you how to write a scene and builds all the way up to writing a full novella. Pablo says, do you recommend these wonderful courses, even though English is not my first language? I understand the material, but I'm not fluent in English. Spanish is my mother language. Um, it's hard for me to answer this directly because I've never taken a class in another language. I mean, all of the fundamentals are exactly the same. I know we have lots of students that don't speak uh, English as their first language. Um, some of the things that are specific to nouns and verbs will probably be different for your language. So you'll have to kind of make that adjustment. Um, and in the future, we hope to start doing it in more languages, but for now it's just in English. But I know that 99% of it's going to apply because it's about fundamental storytelling, not about um, individual language stuff. But we, we do get down to the verb and noun um, level at certain points. And you'll have to see how that applies to you. Who are the editors and what are their backgrounds? So we have uh, StoryGrid certified editors, editors that have gone through extensive training on our end. Um, and then they have to do a, um, do a new assignment every two years to make sure they're staying up with it. And then inside of our uh, writer mentorship program behind the scenes, we have a whole training for new editor mentors. And we have a whole process for onboarding them, looking over what they do. Like they're only allowed to have two or three uh, students the first semester that they're a mentor. Um, and they're looked after by Rachel Arsenault, who is our head editor mentor. Um, and so we have a whole process for making sure everything is done correctly. One of the great things about something like StoryGrid is we have a really systematic approach and we have a clear rubric that we're judging everything against. So if you have three different editor mentors look at your writing, your feedback is going to be 95% the same, um, which you can't say outside of StoryGrid. Um, and so, yeah, we have extensive training both for our StoryGrid certified editors and then the ones that are editor mentors as well. All right. What is the schedule for the group session? Also, how do you make up when there is a time conflict? So on the writer mentorship level, we have um, multiple group sessions a week to choose from. I'm not sure exactly what times those are right off the top of my head, but we try to um, put them in different times. So different time zones and people with different work schedules can make them. We record them all and make them all available. So if you uh, can't make it live, you can submit questions ahead of time and you can always watch the recordings as well. Uh, yeah, we have uh, worksheets uh, every week in the class. I mean, there's some weeks where you're like writing a full scene where it's not a worksheet, you're actually working on the scene. But when it's individual skills that we're working on, there's always worksheets and we're constantly making those better and leveling those up as well. Does the change in focus for the guild alter your focus on your bi-weekly YouTube videos? So actually doing the YouTube videos has been a big change, uh, has, has come as a result of this decision. So if you go back and look, I started doing these uh, YouTube videos in earnest back in uh, August 15th. And so there's a flip side to this new learning about feedback. So on one hand, we know people aren't going to level up as a writer unless they're getting feedback. 
So what that means is I can do all the training I want on YouTube. And until you're actually getting feedback, it's not going to make you a better writer. So um, that's why I'm basically putting I'm the goal is to put everything we know on YouTube in various elements and in various ways. It will never be as systematic or or um, clear as the curriculum and going through it because, man, YouTube is weird. Uh, anyway, I won't get into YouTube. But um, yeah, no, I want to keep putting out videos and growing our YouTube channel. Um, and so that's part of it too. And, um, yeah, so no, that's not going to change it. That's actually a result of this. Jacob asks, how does the shift in training strategy impact the publishing arm of story grid? So the big thing about, so what we ran into, we, uh, we opened up story grid publishing for submissions a few years ago, and we had this really convoluted way that people had to submit uh, manuscripts hoping that one it would cause not that many people to submit manuscripts and then when they did they would be good um, and um, we were wrong so we would get manuscripts and they weren't very good this was a lot too of us realizing we had to figure out how to teach line by line writing as we we're looking at manuscripts that worked technically at the macro level um, but the line by line writing was atrocious. And so um, that combined with the fact that my own line by line writing uh, was atrocious is why we started moving in that direction. Um, so right now we're not planning on opening for submissions. We do have future plans with Story Grid Publishing. Uh, my book will come out in April, my next novel. Um, but um, we're not going to be, it does impact the strategy but we're not going to be opening for submissions or anything like that. Jessica says, can you skip a semester? Or do you need to do them all in the three years? Oh, we have you do them all in order. Um, and we keep track of all of that. So we have people that have to take a semester off and come back and that's fine. Um, but no, you have to start with semesters uh, in the beginning year and work through all three years in order. Um, Otherwise, it just it also wouldn't make sense because it'd be like jumping to calculus before you know algebra. So we would be talking about things and referencing things that you don't know about because you haven't taken the earlier training. Um, are the previous seminars and workshops created by Sean prior to 2024 still to be accessible, although only in audit format? If you purchase them already in the past, you you have forever access to them. As long as StoryGrid is running, you will have access to them. We are currently not selling them. Um, and I don't have any plans to in the future. That may change, but um, somebody would have to fight me on that. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, big picture perspective, as the education training is currently structured, how many years semesters total to get through everything? It's three years. That's it. It's a three-year program. That's not going to change. Has anyone ever used the Guild to earn transfer credit or portfolio credit for a master's degree? No, we are not accredited. Somebody asked me before about whether or not we are going to pursue accreditation to be like a real MFA or something. And as of now, I've decided not to for a couple of reasons. Um, so we have limited resources here at StoryGrid. Like there's only so many of us working on everything. And it's a relatively involved and long and big process to become accredited. And it would probably force us to also change what we were doing to a certain extent. Um, and if I have to choose between getting this accreditation versus just making our program better and helping people become better writers, I'd rather put it all on making better writers. The other is if you go to an accredited university and get an MFA in creative writing, the only thing that that's really good for is if you want to get a job teaching creative writing. Um, it's kind of like getting a philosophy degree in college. It's like that lets you, teach philosophy <laughs> there's not much else and so um 
Otherwise, most people taking MFA programs are just trying to become a better writer. And so um, the feedback we just keep getting from people that have gone through MFA programs and then go through our program is that they learn more in a month in our program than their entire creative writing program. One of my best friends, one of his good friends, is currently halfway through her MFA at Harvard, and she's so frustrated because they're talking a lot about writing and doing all kinds of things, but she's not actually becoming a better writer. And so um, we've decided for now not to go down any kind of accreditation path because all we want to do is help writers level up their craft so they can you know, build the skills, write a book and leave their legacy. So for now, unless it's specifically doing that, we're not interested. Suzanne says four quadrants. I'm only familiar with Ken Wilber's four quadrants. Um, let's see. Fundamentally, your knowledge of Ken's material would help you. The quadrants also relate to the hero's journey. Uh, yeah, we we basically so Sean from the beginning in the book, uh, the story grid broke up the beginning hook, the middle build, and the ending payoff, which are typically this is just a rough thing. This does you're not trying to make this happen for sure, but it's roughly like 25% of your book is the beginning hook, 50% is the middle build, and then 25% is the ending payoff. And then the more that we did training and understand and he understood how we were moving people through story. We broke that up into four quadrants. So we have uh, beginning hook, middle build one, which is the breakdown, middle build two, which is the build up, and then the uh, resolution, the uh, ending payoff. And so those are the four quadrants. And we have specific things we teach within those quadrants and how the story needs to move in those quadrants and all those kind of things. Do you think the reason writing, learning to write is so difficult among creative efforts has to do with how closely tied writing is to thinking and speaking, which makes it difficult to see in your own work that the meaning is being poorly transmitted? Um, I think it's close to that. I think part of it is people think because they can type and they can like string together words into sentences that that makes them a good writer. I know that's what I thought when I started was it's like, well, I know how to do this. I write every day. I just got to write it down like a story, right? And uh, no, <laughs> uh, that doesn't work. So I think that's a big one. And again, it's so hard to know you're doing it right. And so then uh, the longer that you do it on your own, the more confirmation bias starts coming in of like, well, I don't want to admit to myself, I just wasted the last six months or in my case, like six years of my life. And so I must be getting better. This is good writing. People just don't understand me. Agents are just gatekeepers. They're not interested in talking to new writers. And really the writing is just bad. And, um, and so I think the difficulty is because um, there's no way, it's very hard to evaluate your own writing. Um, even as somebody, um, who is now a much better writer and knows story grid really, really well, it's hard for me to evaluate my own writing. It's hard for me to get enough distance uh, to be objective and apply our own rubric to it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, there's lots of reasons that go into it, but I think the biggest is just um, most people just write in a vacuum and they don't, it's hard for them to tell the difference between their writing and somebody else's. Um so writers already working professionally or with degrees in creative writing need to start again at the line by line. Um, yeah, yeah, we make everybody go through the first two semesters because we train, we have a really specific way we go about training it. Um, and yeah, we start everybody at the beginning. Are there plans to produce a book similar in scope to StoryGrid 1.0 with some of the new development insights of StoryGrid community? Yeah, we've talked about this um, in doing this in different ways, uh, but we haven't landed on exactly how we might go about doing this. Um, and it's definitely not at the top of our list. So we're not against it, uh, but it's also not going to happen anytime in like the next year or something. Um, 
Ronnie says, which semester covers story boundaries? Could you be more specific by what you mean about story boundaries? If I join the guild now, will I be in a cohort that starts at the beginning level or do I have to wait till January or some other month? So we've run this in six month semesters and everybody starts at the same time. So if you start, if you join today, you will start on January 7th. Um, so we've run them at the same time. So I, um, when you're in a cohort, you're all going through it at the same time. Uh, Jessica, your math looks correct. Oh, oh, maybe it's not. I don't know. I I don't. I haven't added it up. Um, what is the average size of a guild membership class? Um, it varies, but it's probably around 30. Uh, for the writer mentorship, it's more like 15 to 20. It depends on when you join and where you're at in the process. Yeah, so story boundaries. Um, I'm trying to remember what you're referencing. I read Story Grid 101 when it came out, and it's been a minute. So I'm guessing um, it's talking about genre and um, within genre, there's conventions and obligatory moments. And so when you're writing about a certain thing, you have to have it um, fit within those boundaries because so many people just kind of write random stuff um, and they don't have any real clear idea of how to make sure what they're writing belongs in the story or doesn't belong in the story. And so most of that, if if it's the macro stuff about story, we cover that in year three. Um, that's when we get into the big macro stuff. Because again, we're working from a beat and scene level all the way up to the macro full, full story level. Yeah, so Debbie, if you're already a member of the guild, um, you will just continue to get the training through the three years. If you want to join writer mentorship, we will we'll start you at the beginning of year two at, le at least. So um, if we allow people, if they go through guild, the regular guild training, and they do all the homework, they can submit their scenes. And depending on how good they're writing, how good your writing is, we may let you start in year two of writer mentorship uh, if you went through year one as the group training um, and want to go up. But you have to submit your scenes ahead of time. All right. Okay. I think I've gotten through all the questions. If I have not answered your question, feel free to post it because um, that means I missed it. Um, also, this is kind of last call. So I'm letting you know I'm getting to the bottom of the questions. I'm happy to talk about anything with anything. It doesn't have to be about the program. Um, all right. But you got to post it so I know you got a question. So for the regular guild training, it costs... I mean, what's the math? It's fourteen eighty a year. Well, if you join today, it's thirteen eighty a year. So for one semester, it's that time divided by two. So like six, I don't know, six hundred and something. Um, and yeah, you pay for it as you, or you can pay monthly. So you just pay for it as you go. So um, yeah. So we, that's that's how it works. Uh, Michael says, going through the years of podcasts, seeing the theory grow and develop from the original book into the more comprehensive theory was great. Is there any plan to broaden the YouTube video, start a new podcast or something else to learn about the ongoing evolution? Um, 
our current plans are to do what we're doing now. So um, we are, the, the thing is, is that um, we now have our hands around the fold narrative theory. So um, we can, we can evaluate anything from a sentence. I mean, it's nuts, but like we can literally graph a scene to find the boring parts. Um, so we have our hands around it from how to write a great sentence all the way up to a manuscript. So that's not really going to change. We figured it out. But the difference is we're going to keep getting better at teaching it and running people through it. So like if you look at my I went from being a horrible writer to a good writer in about seven or eight years. The people in our three year program, we have people going into their third year of the program. They have progressed in two years what it took me like five years to progress because we're getting better at teaching it and giving feedback. Um, so it's kind of like the difference between um, if you go to like a physics convention, a physicist. And you stand around like three physicists having a conversation, you will know that they're speaking in English, but have no fucking idea what they're talking about. Okay. So when Sean, especially when Sean's talking to Daniel and Leslie, I will be sitting on a Zoom call. They will be discussing things and I will have no idea what they're fucking talking about. So the real work becomes once the, the hardest work is Sean figuring out the full narrative theory, the full story elephant. Now the work becomes how to translate that into language and systematic processes that normal people can both understand and do. And finding the correct balance. This is something we're still working on and we're going to continue to get better at is like, how much do you consciously have to know in order to put it into practice, right? So a couple of years ago, if you've been around, I was talking a lot about this idea of chicken sexing um, and how there's a really valuable skill of taking a newborn chicken and looking at it and being able to tell if it's male or female. Turns out it's really, really hard to do in fact, there is no way to consciously teach somebody how to do it. So here's how people learn chicken sexing. They stand in a bin and all of these little chickens are coming down. And an expert chicken sexer who gets it right over 95% of the time is standing next to them. So the person picks up a chicken that's trying to learn and they just guess. They have no idea. They're like male. And the person behind them is like, wrong. So they put it in the female. So they pick up the next one, female. Yes. So they put in the female. Male. Yes. And they and at the beginning, they're getting it right 50% of the time. But over time, they start getting it right 60% of the time, then 70% of the time, and then eventually 95% of the time. But here's the fucking crazy thing. The people getting it right 95% of the time have no idea how they're doing it. They just know, okay? This is how Stephen King learned writing. This is how all the great writers that we have tried to learn from learn writing is they just fumbled around randomly until they started getting it right. I just put up an almost 30 minute long video talking about Stephen King's on writing and why it's a horrible book for new writers to read and try to learn from because you're trying to learn from something that did it, did it intuitively. I've been through those classes at Masterwork by Neil Gaiman and R.L. Stein and Malcolm Gladwell, and they talk a lot. And then when you go to try to actually put it into practice, it's impossible to put it into practice because they don't know how they do it because they do it so intuitively. So at StoryGrid, Sean and Leslie and Danielle and our editors can consciously look at writing and figure out what's wrong. And then what we're balancing in the program is how much you consciously have to know and how much we do it by just shoving you in the pool, watching you drown, pull you out, say, I don't know, do this different. You do that different and slowly you get better. But it's going to be way faster than just randomly writing for 10 or 20 years. Um, 
So we're working on that and uh, we're getting better and better at it. Uh, but I'm in that boat. Like, I don't want to understand stuff. I don't need to understand if it's not going to actually make me a better writer. And so with the writer program, that's what we're constantly focused on is making sure we're putting the stuff in and the right practices and giving you the right type of feedback so that you progress quickly with your writing. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, Martha. Uh, so Martha said she loved my dialogue class. Thank you, Martha. You were one of my favorite students. Um, we are going to keep doing the six week workshop. So I mentioned these earlier, so I'll talk uh, more about them now. So, uh, if you go to storygrid.com slash training, there's two different workshops there. There's a micro scene writing workshop, and there's a macro narrative path story through line workshop. And we are giving one-on-one -on -one feedback in those classes, but it's only six weeks. And we're offering those classes uh, for two reasons. So one is, you know, our program is our, our writer mentorship program is three years long. So if somebody just comes in off the street and they, you know, watch one of my YouTube videos and they come to story grid, they're like, not going to want to commit to a three-year program <laughs> off the bat. So I'm like, Hey, try out this six week class. I can make you a better writer in six weeks. And hundred percent of my students that go through it, level up their scene writing. It's really amazing. Um, there was one student in particular, not Martha, who their first week, um, I looked at their scene and I thought, I can't help this person. This is the worst writing I've seen in my entire life. What the fuck am I going to do? I promised I could help everybody become a better writer. I just gave, but I was like, I'll just give them specific feedback and tell them what to do next week. By the last week, he was top three in the class for his scene writing. It was amazing. And so I just see this stuff work. So it gives people a way to kick the tires for six weeks before committing to a three-year program or even a six-month semester. Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, we've been running our guild membership, the group training at that 1480 level for uh, this. We're going into our fifth year. And not all of them can afford to go up to the writer mentorship level. So that's why uh, we give the 50% discount to guild members to those six-week classes. So that if um, you're a member of our group training guild and you want to try out getting feedback, one-on-one -on -one feedback for six weeks, you can take one of our classes and you can focus on the micro or the macro. Have you received feedback or heard reactions from editors and publishers outside of the StoryGrid world about what it's like to work with StoryGrid trained folks? How do folks who aren't trained but are experts in the industry respond to the methodologies taught? Great question. So um, we do have editors. We have StoryGrid certified editors working out in the world. Uh, one of them edited and kind of basically helped ghostwrite a book that became a New York Times bestseller last year. Um and we have them working out on traditionally published books, self-published books, hybrid publishing books, and just applying the story grid methodology. It just works. I mean, it's like, um, it's like, you know, how do I know if my blood pressure is high? Well, I put the little thing on my arm and somebody that knows how to use it chucks my blood pressure. That's what story grid is. It's like checking the story to see if it works and finding the problems. And then you know how to, then how to fix those problems. So yeah, we have that out in the world working. Um, how do folks who aren't trained but experts in the industry, they mostly just ignore us. Um, I worked in publishing for a long time. Um, you know, just like every other creative field, it's full of snobs in most cases. And so uh, they all think they're experts and they don't need to learn anything in general. There's lots of great people. I'm friends with um, one of the head editors at one of the um, fiction publishing imprints of Amazon Publishing. And she's going to take our editor training next year because she wants to get better at being an editor. Uh, and even though she's in the top echelons of publishing, she wants to get better at being an editor. So, um, but in general, if they're in publishing and, and working in publishing, they just kind of ignore us, which is fine. Um. 
Yeah. Okay. So, uh, crime writer is the name. I I don't know what your name is. Um. Uh, I want to say that I love your YouTube videos and agree that YouTube can be a strange area, especially the comments. And I find myself offering feedback in them because they obviously lose themselves. Yeah, I've had to like um, draw some boundaries around myself with the YouTube comments because it's like I'm like, uh, you know, um, yeah, I just can't read them and I was trying to respond to them. And uh, it's just a long descent into hell. Um, let's see. Someone told me about StoryGrid from a panel at South by Southwest last year. Were you the speaker that was there? Um, that was not me. I don't know who that was, but um, thank you to whoever that was. Uh, no. Um, I don't speak at a lot of conferences about story grid. Um, it's, a, it's, you know, the YouTube video I put up on Friday has almost five, like 4,500 views. And I did that for my office. And so the idea of like getting on a plane, traveling somewhere to sit in a room of 50 or a hundred people. And then, and like, they're not going to cover <laughs> all of my, expenses to go so um there is a conference in in ireland that wants to fly me out to speak there i'll do that one uh because i want to go to ireland but um i don't do a lot of speaking it just i can sit in my office and make a video that reaches 10 20 100 times more of the people so um you know we've talked about in the future sending people around to different places but um for now we just don't have the staff that has the time to do it um yeah we still have uh faith asked if the story grid editor training is still a different product yeah that's a that's specifically we used to have people that would join the editor certification training just because they wanted to learn more story grid but really they wanted to be a writer um and we're trying to pretty severely separate those two things now so we do still offer the editor certification. We only um, open it up once a year. It's also a three-year program, but we are pretty adamant that we want it just for people that want to be professional editors. Um, so it's not if it's not the right way to learn writing. It's the right way to learn editing, um, which are two different skills. All right. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Where can I read about your narrative theory? Um, nowhere. I mean, it's kind of, uh, threaded through everything we do. So articles on the website, the YouTube channel, um, that's all based on the narrative theory. Uh, um, yeah, so all the details for the class are at the link on your screen, storygrid.com slash guild. Um, if you have any other questions specific about the class, I'm happy to answer those, or you can always email us as well. All right, great question, Jessica. I have several manuscripts I want to get published. Should I hire a story grid? editor to editor edit them first or go through the training first so it depends all right so here's how you would know take your first three scenes of one of your manuscripts send them to six people and tell them hey when you're excited to read the next few scenes let me know and if you don't hear from anybody that means your scene writing sucks and you need to get better um and that's, you should join the program because if your scene writing doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Look, man, I hate that. I hate, part of me likes obviously answering questions, but um, I hate crushing people's dreams. Um, but if your scene writing's not good, you have several manuscripts that don't work that will need to be rewrote from word one anyway. So if you hire a story grid certified editor, that you're going to end up paying them a lot of money to deal with the macro problems of your story. 
but if you can't write a great scene um you're going to rewrite it fix the macro problems but you'll still have 70 scenes that don't work um so this is why i just um i wish i wish for myself i could go back to 25 year old tim that was trying to learn how to write fiction and read books like on writing that was completely worth actually set me back in my opinion um and just start trying to figure out how to write a sentence and then once i can write a great sentence write a scene that has lots of sentences that work um because um i spent i mean i i won nano rimo three times and wrote really shitty manuscripts that will never that are completely unpublishable um so yeah, that's what I would do. If you feel like your scene writing is great um, and you just need macro help on your story, hiring a story grid certified editor is the way to go. But I would feel I would make sure you're confident with that scene writing first. So in terms of working to figure out how much to teach the theory, your group is focusing on teaching writers to write, not focusing on teaching people to become story theorists. That's correct. We want great writers at the end. I don't actually care if they know how they do what they do. It's our job to know how you do what you do because we got to teach it. Uh, it's your job to be able to write. Um, and so that is our number one goal. Um, that is all we think about. How do I become a member of the group training guild? Yeah, you just go to storygrid.com slash guild, scroll down, and there's a register button, and you can join right there. How much money is the six-week class? Those are $1,200, but again, if you're a member of the guild, they're $600. Uh, I am just getting free to get on. Will you be doing it? Barbara, I don't, I don't think your question came through completely. If you were asking if I recorded it, I did record it and I will send out a recording. <laughs> Dream Slayer. <laughs> yeah, I see you popping up in my comments. All right. Uh, awesome, Stephen. Excited to have you. Yeah, so... Uh, a lot of times I find that people are so focused on what they believe they understand about writing and that's what it feels like. And I know this is what it feels like. Cause this is what I feel like is I learn something and I'm like, I got it. And then I go to do it and I'm like, Oh, I don't got it. Uh, and that's what, that is like a constant feeling in this writing stuff is it's like, you think you got it and then you go to do it and you don't got it. And we even see that in that six week scene writing workshop I run is I'll teach something. I can get people to repeat back to me the theory. And then I read their scene and they didn't do anything that I said to do. And it's because not because they're idiots. Cause I was the same way as Sean. I remember, see, this is what's funny. We're pretty deep into this call. So I'm assuming you're really into the nerdy stuff. So when we were first figuring out this line by line writing stuff, See, you guys are lucky. You're going to join a program where we know how to teach it. We know where to start, what to do next, how to give feedback. When we started trying to figure this out after Sean was like, you can't write a fucking sentence, but also I don't know how to teach you to write a sentence. They would, <laughs> Sean, Leslie, and Danielle would have me write a scene. I would turn in the scene on Thursday night and on Friday morning, we get on a Zoom call and we would spend three hours talking about how I couldn't understand what they were talking about. And most of the time they would, um, most of the time they would um, start talking about me in the third person. Like I wasn't there. And they're like, why can't he understand what we're talking about? It felt like we understood this clearly. Yeah. But obviously not because look at those sentences they are awful. And I'm like, all right, well just let me know when you want my input on things. Um, it was really, I mean, I'm, I'm saying it in like a jokey way, but it was brutal. There was one time we were an hour into the call and we were on the second word of my first sentence talking about how, why did you choose that verb? That's a horrible verb. You should choose verbs like this. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'd go the next week, turn in a seam. It's just as bad. 
And it took about three months of that before we had our first breakthrough of how to actually teach it. And then I started getting better, uh, but still pretty slowly because we were still trying to wrap our heads around how to teach it. And now, you know, years later, we teach it very systematically um, and it's way easier. But um, I got so angry twice. I just logged off the call because I'm just I would just get so, so angry. So, um, yeah. So this is the thing is when this is still hard. Right. So like it's still a three year program. And you're going to get into it. And most of the time you're going to feel like an idiot, even when you're doing a lot of it right because all that you're going to notice is everything you're doing wrong. Um, but that's, you know, uh, we want to constantly keep our students at the edge of what they know so they can learn the next thing. Um, and, um, and so one thing I promise to all our students um, is that I'll never ask you to do something I haven't done as well. And I'm not never going to hold you to a lower bar than I hold myself. When we were taking submissions, um, people would get frustrated at us that we wouldn't publish their work. And I'm like, have you listened to the podcast? Like Sean, like kicks the shit out of me every week. You think I'm not going to do the same thing to you? I am I own the publishing house and I can't get my own writing published, right? Like I'm not going to hold you to some lower standard. And so... Um, so yeah, so that's that's uh, that's what we want to do is we want to make great writers and uh, everything dies on that altar. All right. <laughs> YouTube comment section for story grid videos has folks melting down in real time about writing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So any chance in the future that you could offer bite-sized training and feedback, e.g. how to write a sentence session? I mean, that's what I'm trying to do in the workshops, the six-week workshops. Um, that's about as small as I want to go right now is six weeks. Because um, if, I, if I try to do something live, it's, again, I don't want to if I try to do it for, if I do it free, I have to be like handpick the, the stuff I'm focusing on because I'll have so many people in it. I can't like give everybody feedback. So then I got to charge, I got to really charge money to cut people down so we can give individual feedback. And so we've talked a lot about the right way to do that. And we're going to continue to get better. But the main thing is to have two six week courses a micro and a macro, and that's what we're offering. So we're going to continue to iterate on those and get better, but that's not going to change anytime soon. Yeah, so when you join, uh, so people are asking if they join now, what should they do between now and January 7? Um, there's a couple things that you can do. One is as soon as you join, you get access to three foundational classes um, and I would start with the five commandments class. Um, so you get immediate access to that. It's taught by Daniel Kiowski, our chief academic officer, and it will get you really familiar with the five commandments in preparation for the class. Um, the other thing that I just wish everybody would do is buy one of our story grid masterwork analysis guides. Um, I have them here. Like here's my, here's our Frankenstein one. We have them at storygrid.com slash books, and it's literally a scene by scene analysis of the entire book. Um, and so, you know, start with something like our Pride and Prejudice one or the wonderful Wizard of Oz or Treasure Island. Um, and that's a really good kind of daily practice if you just go through one scene a day. Da, da, da. you know I'm, I'm just gonna address this one faith says we benefit because you have crocodile skin um 
you know, it still hurts. <laughs> I think the thing is, is um, I want to become a better writer. You know, when Sean called me and told me my book worked um, and that he loved it, he used that L word. He loved it. Um, it's like, that's what I've been. That's what I set out to do. And so to me personally, you know, I, when I talk about it, story grid, everything dies on the altar of helping you become a better writer. I mean, that's my altar too, is like my ego dies on that altar too. So everybody, when they listen to the podcast, they're like, how can you, how can you one, take that kind of feedback and two, do it in front of people? Well, at the beginning, the only way I could get the feedback was to offer to do it in front of people because Sean wasn't just going to coach me for free. So I would rather just offer myself up because I wanted the feedback. And then obviously, as we got into story grid, I, you know, this is part of my role as being the public shock monkey. But, um, but I see it as like, um, I want to be a great writer and I don't honestly care what that takes. So um, if it takes that, it's worth it. So I always like run it through that. Um, and obviously sometimes uh, it's really, really painful because, uh, you know, sometimes I can't do that in real time. Let my ego go and just listen. Um, but um, I think this, mat I mean, this matters on a global scale. I want you to write. I want you to build the skills, write a book and leave a legacy but also on like a much bigger scale, um, the more that everybody understands what complex great stories are, the less likely that you are to be taken in by bullshit stories. Um, and so we feel like this is also our contribution to humanity. Um, so all of this makes it easy to keep showing up for work when you feel like you're doing something that matters. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't think everybody can do what I do, but it's not a crocodile skin. I think it's more of a hyper focus on what matters. And um, in most cases, my ego is not the thing that matters. Um, yeah, what about using examples from writers who wish to participate, guild members, a before and after posted to the website under the category to demonstrate the leveling up? So that's part of what we're adding to the guild in the new year is doing that kind of workshopping. The um, the other the other thing that we're going to be able to do soon is by 2025, we're going to be publishing novels and novellas written by people that went through our program. And we have all of their writing for three years. And so it's going to become really clear what we can do for writers when we start publishing great works of fiction, which we're going to be able to do. Oh, and my book comes out in April. The title's The Shithead. My parents are really proud. Uh, <laughs> um, Terry says, I'm a fifth grade teacher. How do you use StoryGrid to help me become a better teacher? Ever thought about doing teacher training? Yeah, um, Terry, uh, email support at storygrid.com. My mom, Karen, is going to get your email and tell her you're a teacher. And, um, and then we'll follow up with you on that. Oh, the third thing to do before January. I think I only said two things to do. Take the five commandments course and go through one of the story, the masterwork analysis guides. Mm. Uh. Nicole says, what kind of feedback would you give to a writer who has depression? One of my writer friends hasn't been producing much as of late, but I feel too bad trying to give enough feedback. Um, Annette, Annette gave some really good feedback about how the editor mentorship program works. Um, yeah, that's probably above my pay grade. 
um, my wife's a therapist. I would say to go to therapy first and deal with the depression. Um, not that it's just something you deal with or anything. Um, but yeah, I work on the depression first, I would say. Um, uh, all right. I think again, I got to the bottom of any questions. So if you have any questions, get them in quick. Cause I think I got to the bottom. Oh, David said, I hope that there is a level of professionalism in the reviews and critiques. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. We are, <laughs> you would never get snarky or, sarcastic comments from one of your editor mentors um we just care too much about you and your writing and if god forbid something like that happened we would nip it in the bud so fast i'm sure at some point sean and i have been sarcastic and snarky with each other um but we also know each other really well so but that's not how we do feedback ba -ba -ba. All right. I think we will wrap it up there. An hour and a half. Not too bad. Um, I really appreciate everybody being here. Let me make sure there's not one more question. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, I appreciate everybody being here um, and showing up for this and being a part of StoryGrid. Um, I love my job. The fact that I get to do this for a living seems pretty nuts to me still. Um, so thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of it. I do highly recommend you join uh, the guild for the new year. It's great training. You're going to learn about feedback, how to give feedback, how to get feedback. Um, and you're going to get to be a part of it as we continue to level up everything that we're doing at StoryGrid. So storygrid.com slash guild. If you want that $100 discount on the yearly um, payment for the guild, make sure you join today. Um, and that registration button is right there on storygrid.com slash guild. But either way, Thanks for much for, for being here. Thanks for being a writer. Um, you matter in the world. That's why we do all of this. And uh, I'll see you down the road. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.